I'm Satvik. Uh, I'm a PhD student at NC State. Uh, today, I'll be presenting a work on uh, extracting insights uh, by analyzing more than a million robocall audio recordings. If you don't know what robocalls are, these are automated or semi-automated phone calls uh, that usually play a recorded message once you answer them. It's, it's, re it's a really big problem here in the US to an extent where people have basically stopped answering calls from unknown numbers. Uh, for example, a hiker who was lost in the woods for over 24 hours ignored calls from his own rescuers, thinking that those were robocalls. Uh, robocalls don't just affect the elderly. Uh, recent reports from the FTC uh, suggest that even the people in their 20s are falling for some of these scams. Uh, but illegal robocalling is not a new problem. It's been a problem for over a decade. Why are we still struggling to stop illegal robocalls? There are a few reasons. Uh, carriers or telephone service providers don't really have the tools to analyze vast amounts of robocall data, specifically robocall audio data. Uh, enforcement agencies and uh, uh, regulators who are responsible for going after these illegal robocalling operations don't have the time or the human resources to go after and take action against every illegal robocalling operation that's reported to them. Also, they don't really have the tools to analyze all the data that they receive. And finally, robocall blocking is mostly based on uh, metadata that's controlled by the adversary. It could be the caller ID or call signing information. So more broadly, we don't really have the tools to analyze vast amounts of robocall audio data. So as part of our research, uh, we developed a novel pipeline that enables robocall domain experts to analyze millions of robocall recordings. And using this, we were able to study how social security scams or tech support scams have changed their tactics over time. Uh, we also explored how the 2020 presidential elections influenced the broader robocalling landscape. And finally, we studied how do these robocallers engage with the targets. To answer all this data, we had to answer all these questions, we had to collect real world robocall data. And we did that by deploying and operating our own telephony honeypot. Uh, the principle behind our data collection is that we own a large set of phone numbers and we automatically answer calls made to these numbers and also record the call audio. Um, over a span of 23 months, we were able to collect more than a million robocall audio recordings using our honeypot. Now we had all this data, but we didn't really have the tools to analyze and distill insights from this data. So the key contribution of our work is this pipeline called Snorkal. Uh, it's a robocall content analysis pipeline that enables domain experts to analyze robocall audio recordings. And now let's take a quick look at how this pipeline works. So the, the input to these pipeline, this pipeline are audio recordings that are collected in our honeypot. And the first stage is where we aggregate these individual audio recordings into a broader robocalling campaign. And a robocalling campaign is a collection of identical or nearly identical robocall audio recordings. And this builds on top of our work published here at USNICS in 2020. Uh, next, we take representative calls from each of these campaigns and we transcribe them using Google speech to text. And finally, we detect non-English robocalls and discard them. And at this stage, we have high quality English robocall transcripts that represent robocall campaigns. Now we have English transcripts and we use the semantics within these transcripts to categorize robocalling campaigns into different categories based on what they're saying. What does that really mean? Let's build this intuition with an example. What you see here is an example social security robocall. Uh, I've highlighted a few keywords. It's social security administration, suspend your social number, call social security immediately. And if you perform an operation called named entity recognition on this piece of data, that's what you get. Now, intuitively, based on these signals, we were able to label this data as a social security robocall. Now imagine if you can write some simple Python functions that can collectively translate these intuitions into, uh, into something that you can label data with. And that's the key insight behind our whole labeling pipeline, where we can leverage signals in named entities and keywords to label robocalling data. And we operationalize this using a semi-supervised machine learning framework called Snorkel. Uh, this enables uh, us to, uh, as, as human experts, we can write simple labeling functions that can uh, label data. And Snorkel has been 
adopted widely across different communities. Uh, but in our case, we build abstractions on top of the snorkel framework to label robocall data. Now, although snorkel can label any category of robocall, we've specifically focused on five categories in our work. The first two categories are social security robocalls and tech support robocalls. So these two categories are known to be fraudulent or almost always illegal, uh, and they usually have a malicious intent. Uh, our data collection overlapped with the 2020 presidential election. So we also developed a political snorkel. And finally, uh, we studied financial and business related snorkels because these um, fall in this gray area where some of these calls are pure telemarketing versus some of them can be malicious. Now we collected over a million robocall recordings. We built this pipeline that can analyze this data. What did we learn? We saw that social security scams have evolved substantially. Uh, and if you're not familiar with what the older forms of social security scams were, first the caller impersonates the social security administration. And then they use some form of threats to, uh, to deceive their victims. Usually it's in the form of an arrest warrant. And they also use a false sense of authority. They claim to be an officer or a representative or an agent. And they urge the target to press a number or call them back immediately. Um, and they also frequently associate themselves with uh, other government entities like the FBI or the DA or Treasury, and so on. But Snorkel helped us uncover this new tactics used by these social security scams, where they're impersonating social security disability advisors. Clearly, they're targeting people who seek disability benefits. These are elders or people with some form of uh, disability. And it was interesting to see that these calls use a non-intimidating tactic, as if they're trying to help the targets. And they continue to impersonate a government entity. So this highlights the robustness of Snorkel, where we were able to extra or study new types or change, uh, changes in tactics of uh, well-known uh, scams. Snorkel also allowed us to study temporal characteristics of certain types of calls. And what you see here is the call volume distribution of social security scams throughout our study period. And if you focus on the red box, that's when the COVID lockdowns were imposed. And a lot of people were, we struggled when the lockdowns were imposed to adapt our business. And what we see here is the volume of social security scams dropped down to zero. And they remained low until people figured out how to navigate around these lockdowns. Uh, and this tells us how these social security scams are well-established operations and they function like regular businesses. Next, we studied tech support scams and uh, we found that Amazon scams are the new Windows tech support scams. So these, these calls are impersonating Amazon and they were a multiple order of magnitude larger than the traditional Windows-based tech support scams we might have heard of. It was also interesting to see this long tail of telecom carriers being impersonated. If you focus on the bottom left graph, you can see Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, so on. Um, then we were curious about the pricing strategy used by these tech support scammers. So to study this, uh, we extracted the dollar values mentioned in these tech support scams. We looked at the distribution and we found that on a median tech support call, attempts to defraud their victim by about $400, which is a substantial amount of money. Uh, we were also able to uncover a handful of um, cryptocurrency-related tech support scams. These scams were impersonating Coinbase support agents trying to offer help to unlock hidden Bitcoins or locked away Bitcoins. Uh, the volume was much lower compared to other types of uh, uh, tech support scams, Primarily because if you, if you call an active phone number in the US, it's likely that that person who owns the phone number also has an active Amazon account versus it's, it's less likely that the person would have an active cryptocurrency wallet. The next category of robocalls we studied were political robocalls. And uh, what you see here is the call volume distribution of political robocalls during a study period. You can see that the, the volume of political robocalls increased drastically until the election day and dropped steeply. And this might be obvious, but it was reassuring for us to see that Snorkel is able to uh, capture these trends uh, accurately. Also, we did not do a partisan analysis wherein we did not measure what was the volume of Democrat, Republican, or independent calls. 
Now, when we were studying these political calls uh, between August and uh, July, August and November of 2021, we uncovered some really large campaigns in our honeypot. And we studied this a little deeper and we found that these campaigns were representing, and I quote, economic impact student loan forgiveness program recently put into effect by the Biden administration. Although there was a lot of discussion around student loans at the time, nothing was officially passed or nothing was official. So it's unclear if people, if these robocalls were trying to deceive their, uh, their targets by stealing information or um, defrauding them uh, of some money. Uh, but it was interesting to see that Snorkel was able to label these calls as both financial and political, uh, highlighting its robustness. The takeaway from all these findings is that Snorkel is a tool that enables domain experts to extract insights from vast amounts of uh, robocall data. Next, we were interested in how these robocallers engage with the targets. And when these robocallers generate these robocalls, they want the target to either call them back or somehow engage with them, right? And we were able to extract calls to action from robocall transcripts, and we found that about 70% of all campaigns use some form of the other, when they're some form of call to actions when they're engaging with the targets. And the most often used call to action was either to press a particular number or dial a particular number. Now, when they're asking their targets to dial a number, that led us to an interesting research question was, what is this number that they're asking them to dial? And these are called callback numbers. And callback numbers are embedded within the call audio. So we developed Snorkel to extract these callback numbers with high accuracy. And what we found was these callback numbers rarely match the caller ID shown on the phone. Uh, and mostly we know that caller ID is, is spoofed. Uh, but it's in the robocaller's interest to not spoof these callback numbers because they want to receive your calls. Uh, and the interesting part is these callback numbers tie back to the robocalling infrastructure used to receive these calls. And we saw that uh, there was an overlap where a health insurance campaign was also using the same callback number as a car warranty uh, campaign. And these callback numbers also are important for investigators because they can collect historical data and go back and look at number ownership information and potentially look up who generated these calls at various points of time. Although I've discussed a lot of findings, uh, in our paper we discuss and uh, describe in more detail how snorkel models can be trained for different categories of robocalls. Uh, we also provide a comprehensive robocall labeling codebook and we discuss uh, how financial robocalls have evolved over time where they're uh, impersonating banks and credit card companies. Uh, in our discussion, we explain how we empower different stakeholders to combat against uh, illegal robocalls. So Snorkel, which is the pipeline that we've developed, enables domain experts to label vast amounts of robocall data and accurately label robocalls that they're interested in. Uh, we also saw how social security scams and tech support scams have evolved substantially over time, and they continue to target the most vulnerable segments of a society. Uh, we also saw how major societal events like uh, the elections or the student loan forgiveness announcements or the worldwide pandemic it has an impact on the robocalling ecosystem. And finally, we enable stakeholders to move to a more proactive approach to combat uh, illegal robocalls. Uh, we have more details on our website, that's robocall.science, and uh, with that, I'm happy to take any questions.